create a, uh, an inheritance in a subclass is we say this extends that, which means that we can add attributes and methods to it. All right, next. Yes, yes. Subclass has only one superclass. There is no multiple inheritance in Java. Multiple inheritance would be very difficult to implement because what if you had, you know, a mammal class and a flying things class and bat was a subclass of both. There might be a, you know, get food method on the bat. All right, or I'm sorry, there might be a get food method on both the bat and the flying thing method, get fuel or something like that. Well, which one would the bat get? Would the bat get the method that exists on the, on the flying thing or would the bat get the method that exists on the mammals superclass? It gets to be confusing. The developers of Java threw up their hands and said, you know what, that, that's more trouble than it's worth. We'll only allow one level of inheritance. Now, what we'll talk about possibly tonight, and if not tonight, uh, next time, are interfaces. Uh, and, and we'll talk about really, really when to use one versus another. Uh, interfaces sort of allow you to get some of the benefits of multiple inheritance, but not all. All right? Back row, Ashley? Right. Constructors are not inherited. In fact, one of the things we're going to do today, more than likely, is, is talk about the way constructors work. Finally. Oh. <laughs> okay. How... <laughs> Does anyone want to add something? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in other words, that inheritance chain could actually go further this way. So this can extend, or this can extend that, and this can extend that. You know, think of it again, that we could have a, a superclass of animal and a subclass of mammal, and then a subclass of mammal of human. All right? And there's always an is a relationship going all the way up, right? A human is a mammal. A mammal is an animal. And in fact, a human, by implication, is an animal. Yes? No, not at all. Not at all. There's, there's one level of inheritance. What would be problematic is if one subclass could have two superclasses. That would be truly the issue. And as far as, I'm not really sure what you mean by multiple personality. I was saying because the subclass, if you put it down, it would then be a superclass. Well, yeah, it's always in relation. I mean, it's, it's just like saying that, you know, I'm a, a son, but I'm also a father. Right? It depends on who you're talking to. Am I considered the son or a father? Or I'm considered a brother, you know, to some people and to other people. So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, you know. The thing is, 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 is in, in one sense, every, uh, every class but one is a subclass of something. There is at the very top of the Java inheritance chain an object, all right? And everything inherits from that somewhere down the line. So everything is someone's subclass. And then they may have some classes of their own and it may go further deep. Yes? Yeah, for constructors and for really any methods. You can actually call super to call the appropriate constructor or method on the superclass. So that's true for cons uh, constructors, but it's also true for, um, for just regular methods as well. All right. 
And actually, we saw an example of that last time when we had our calculate pay rate method all right, on, on the specialist uh, uh, class. Because if you remember, we said that the, the pay rate for a specialist was, what would we say, 50% more than for a regular consultant or something like that. So we first called the function on the consultant, the super class, to get the value of that, and then we multiplied it by 1.5 to get the, the, the extra amount that a specialist uh, pays. All right, that's a really good list. I'm going to add a few more things to this list. In addition to inheriting methods, it, can, it also inherits attributes. Okay. A subclass is a specialization of a superclass, and the test is the is a test. <laughs> Human is a mammal. Bird is a flying thing. A specialist is a consultant. All right. Notice that that only works one way. All right. I can't say that an animal is a mammal. Because there's animals that aren't mammals. There are flying things that are not birds, and there are consultants that are not specialists. So it works one way. The subclass is a example or is a specialized version of the main class, of the, of the super class, rather. So the is a test is important. Um, you can define additional methods and attributes on a subclass. I just want to talk a minute about additional methods. Additional methods could be brand new methods that, that haven't been seen on the superclass before. For example, I think we talked about it um, last time. There was a get specialization method in our specialist uh, class, right? There is no such method in the consultant class because consultants don't have specialization, so we can add that. The other thing that we can do is we can, uh, another way to add a method is to overload a function. Now, I, I, I think I thought we talked about overloading functions in this class. I'm not 100% sure. Can anyone define what it means to overload a class? Yes. Uh, if you change one word to that definition, um, you, you'll be correct. Overloading a function is giving a function with the same name with a different um, number and or type of arguments. All right. So, for example, similar to what we do with constructors, we overload constructors, right? There might be several constructors on a class, but each one of them has its own unique combination of arguments, of number and type of arguments. So I could define a, consul uh, a constructor that has uh, no arguments. I could define a constructor that has one argument that's a string. I could define a different constructor that has one argument that's an integer. All right, But I couldn't define then a second constructor that also had one argument that was a string. Right? But I could define another one that had two arguments, two strings, or something like that. So, if I had a function called um, set consultant info, all right. Let's say this is my consultant class. All right. I could have a function called set consultant info that accepts a single string as an argument that represented the name of the consultant. I could then have one that had the same name and accepted two strings, the name and the type. That's allowable, right? Because what has to be unique is the combination of the name and the number and types of the arguments. 
So that's legit as well. I could then have on my specialist class, class a set consultant method that accepted a name, a type, and a specialty, all three being strings. So one of the ways I can add a method to a class is by overloading. All right. So I can overload functions even if there is no inheritance involved, but I can, I can if there is inheritance as well. All right. The idea with these uh, overloaded functions is typically what happens is the ones with less arguments do the same thing as the ones with more arguments except the ones with less arguments fill in some of the values with default values. So for example, my set consultant info that accepts a string might call the set consultant info function that accepts a string and an arg type and default the value of the arg type to R for regular consultant. So a lot of times that's what happens when you have overloaded functions is the one with less arguments sort of default some of the values for uh, compared to the one with more arguments. There's other reasons to overload, but again, that, that's a, a pretty common one. Now, one thing that no one touched on, that we can touch on, is the notion of casting. All right? When we, when we talk about casting, what we're talking about is treating an object as a member of a certain class. If you remember from last time, we had a project that had an array list that consisted of a bunch of consultant objects. We had a method on that, I think a constructor that accepted a consultant object, and I think one even that accepted two consultant objects. Then we had add consultant that accepted a consultant object as well. Because in our example, a specialist is a consultant. All right, thank you. Maybe that's why they have it there. Because I look and if I see me instead of the paper, I know I don't have the thing right. Because a specialist is a consultant, anything that takes a consultant, I can also give it a specialist. Because a specialist is a consultant. So any function I have that expects a consultant, I can give it a specialist. Because a specialist is a consultant. Now, when you treat a specialist like a consultant, only the consultant's methods are available to you. All right. So if there's any new methods declared on the specialist, those methods can't be called. All right. Because consultants don't know about getting the specialty. That's something that consultants don't know about. Only specialists know it. Now, with polymorphism, however, we guarantee that for those functions that exist on the consultant level, we get the specialist version of those functions if we call those functions. So for example, there is a get pay rate, I think. Well, let me actually pull up the, the class. In our consultant class, there is a yeah, get pay rate method. All right. There is also a get pay rate method on the specialist that overrides the consultant. It first calls the consultant's pay rate method and then multiplies it by 1.5 so that we get the specialist pay rate. Now, if I call the get pay rate method on a specialist object, 
regardless of how I've casted that specialist object, if I've casted it as a consultant or not, I'm going to get this method. There's only one object on the heap, so I'll get the proper method. If, however, I cast it as a consultant, I will not be able to call this get specialty method because consultants don't know about get specialty. Not all consultants have a specialty, so I can't call the method of the subclass if I've casted it to the superclass. Does that make sense? All right. Question. Let's run through some. Uh, is it correct to say that some of you are not really clear on what I'm saying here? Is that correct? Okay. All right, let's go through a couple examples. Let's make a, our very own test class. And for now, let's forget about the project. Let's do everything with the consultant and specialist class. I'm going to call the get pay rate on both of these guys. So the first one will be Mike the consultant and the second one will be Jeremy the specialist. So I'm going to start off not doing anything confusing. I'm going to declare C as a consultant. Let's make this guy S. Or S for specialist. And I declare S as a specialist. And then I'm declaring both of these with no, or I'm sorry, with one argument, an argument for the name, but no argument for type. So both of these classes have methods that will, if, if there's no type declared, uh, will default it to R. All right. So both the consultant and specialist, if I don't say otherwise, it will be uh, add, um, initialized to R. Notice again, on the specialist there is no set type because you got that one for free on the consultant class. Um, and really there's nothing different we're doing when we set the the, uh, the, the consultant type. So therefore we don't have to override that at all. So let's go and do this one. Let's go and compile. And Have to change the name to that. Or I forgot to save it. There you go. All right. Okay, it says the rate for Mike the consultant is 30. The rate for Jeremy the specialist is 45. Which makes sense, right? The consultant rate for a regular consultant is 30. For a specialist, it's one and a half times that, so it's 45. Does that make sense to everyone? 
All right, I, because it's a specialist, I've overwritten it. All right, now I'm going to go into my test case and I'm still going to create a specialist class here, but I'm going to point to it with a consultant object reference. Okay, I'm still making a specialist. Jeremy is still a specialist. I'm allowed to say this because specialists are consultants. So I can say I want a consultant. What kind of consultant I want? Well, I want a specialist named Jeremy who's a regular consultant. So that's legal from a logical sense, right? Because specialists are consultants. So anywhere that I can put a consultant, I can put a specialist, right? So when I declare a object reference for a consultant, I can fill that object reference with a object reference to a specialist. All right. So let's go. I'm going to just for my own sanity to make sure that I, I've saved it correctly. I'm going to like put a take one, take two, and so on. This will be take two. I'd hate to be all happy thinking I'm demonstrating something and realize I forgot to save something. So really I had never changed uh, the code. So we'll go and do that. All right. Still gives the same results. Why is that? Well, because the object that S points to is a specialist object. Therefore, I can when I call the get pay rate on a specialist object, I get the specialist version of that get pay rate method. All right. So therefore, even though the object reference it points to is a consultant, all right. When I call the get pay rate method, because this object is actually a specialist, I get the specialist version of the get pay rate method. Now, watch this. I could say, I'm going to make it a specialist again, and I'm going to create Jeremy with. a specialty. Okay, I don't have a three argument constructor, so I will call s dot set specialty And this should work just as we please. I'm going to go change that to take three. So I'm sure I got the right version of this guy. And it tells me, sure enough, that Jeremy specialty is HTML5. Now, what do you suppose is going to happen? If I go and do this, compile error. All right. Can anyone else, nothing personal, can anyone else describe why you're going to get a compile error? Yeah. Yeah. We know because we're looking at this that consultant, in this particular case, the consultant is a specialist. However, the compiler has no idea. We could have gone in and, and there could be a statement like this, S equals C, 
where we replace that. All right. So the compiler has no idea that by the time this statement executes, that object reference is pointing to a specialist. All it can assume is that it's pointing to some consultant. And because the set specialty and get specialty are not methods on a consultant, this will give us a compile error. So this, the object reference that you create, sort of constrains what functions you can call. You can only call functions on that level, on that class's level, and above, right? So again, if, if there were levels of super classes, you know, whatever that level is and above, because you know for sure that that function will be available, all right? However, what you've created the object as will dictate what version of that function it will get. So, sure enough, we'll go in and we'll try to compile this, and it's going to blow sky high. Actually, I'm, I'm both, of the, both of the methods that we called on a specialty give us an error. All right. Questions about that? Let's have some more fun. All right. Let's do this. Specialist S equals new specialist Jeremy R and S set specialty. Let's make a consultant X equals consultant S. What that's doing is that's going to that's going to do nothing because I put the syntax wrong. Let's cast it as a consultant. Which, by the way, we don't actually have to do. This statement would be the equivalent of this statement. Either way, we're saying take our specialist object and treat it like it's a consultant. So really, these two statements are, are equivalent. So I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm not really, but let's keep that in the back of our mind because I'm going to try doing it the reverse in a minute. All right, so now I have consultant X equals S. So I have effectively cast that specialist object as a consultant. So if I do this, If I say X got get pay rate, what am I going to get? Your choices are 30 and 45. 30 is what a regular consultant would make. 45 is what a specialist would make. Yes? 45. We're going to get 45. How many agree with him? How many disagree? How many think we're, how many are not voting because then they can try to take credit if we get a compile error? Let's see. Tells, sure enough, that they're 45. Why is that? Let's go and analyze this. All right. We have created a specialist object. That means that it has specialist methods associated with it. So on that object S, that's on the heap, and remember, regardless of the levels of inheritance, there's only one object on the heap. All right? And that particular object pointed to by S has um, the specialist version of the functions. All right? I then say, I want to point to that specialist object using the object reference 
of a consultant object called X. So effectively, this is saying I want to treat X like a consultant. Oh, I'm sorry, I want to treat S like a consultant. I want to treat the object that is pointed to by S. I want to point to it by this variable X now, and X is going to be looking at that object as though it's a consultant. Now, I don't get a compiler because that's legit, right? S, which is a specialist, Jeremy, which is a specialist, is also a consultant, right? Because all specialists are consultants. So therefore, X can point to that object and say, I'm going to treat it like a specialist. Now, when I get down here then and I call that method, remember, I'm always, there's only one object on the heap. I'm going to get the version of the method for the manner in which the object was created. And this object was created as a specialist, is being referenced as a consultant, but it was created as a specialist. Therefore, we're going to get the specialist version of that method. It, it depends how it's created, correct. Whatever the new says, that's, you know, that's what determines what version of the function it gets. So whatever layer you do that new on, it's going to get that versions of the function. The specific object reference constrains what functions we're allowed to call. So we're allowed to call any function, if we're pointing to it with x, which is an object reference for a consultant, we can call any function that is declared on the consultant class. We'll get the if, if it's overridden on the specialist, we'll get that version of it, but we can call any of those methods that are declared on the consultant class. We can't call the methods that just exist on the, um, on the specialist class. Yes? Well, we, we, saw, we saw a good case of that before, right? When we looked at the project, look at the project example for this. A project has a list of consultants that works on it. All right. Now, some of those consultants might be plain old consultants, and some of those consultants might be specialists. So we can write methods to add consultants to that array list, all right, and we know we're adding consultants. And then when we go to start calculating the bill for that project and the expense for that project, we'll use the proper method depending on whether it's a specialist or a consultant. So we do that because we want to treat it polymorphically. All right? We want to be able to treat all these like consultants when it comes to calculating bill time, but we want a different method for calculating the expenses and all that for specialists versus that. So it's very common to do it that way. Yes. It's, it, still, it still has those, right. There's only one on the heap. We can't just access those defined only on the specialist level using that object reference. We'll get the right version of them. We'll get the specialist version of all the ones that uh, are on the consultant class, but we can't call anything that we extended in the specialist class. Yeah, this, is, this would just restrict it. This says, hey, I want to treat this just like a consultant. And again, yes, this example is just engineered to demonstrate these behaviors. This isn't particularly useful. But we did see a use for it the other day, where we had a project that contains a list of consultants. And we want to give that project maybe some of the consultants that are regular consultants and some of the consultants that are specialists. Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct. Right. Um, yeah, more or less. In this case, notice I could, for example, right now, in this particular example, there are two objects, object references that are pointing to that specialist object. S, 
and x, right? I could use s to call the methods on that. I could use x. I could not use x to call the things that are defined on the level of the specialist. Exactly. All right. Now, let's try this. Oh, sure. Go ahead. No. No. It doesn't matter how it's cast. We're always getting the proper version of the function. In other words, let's go back and put it how it was. We had con we had consultant x equals s, right? And then I said system And consultant, but you get the version of those that are declared based on how that object was created. All right. And again, the reason for it, if you think through it, it's pretty logical. Here we know that S, you know, we, we rig the deck. We know that S is a specialist here. But in the intermeaning line, you know, in the in the, the the time between here and here, S could have been set to another class. I could have said S equals C. So the compiler has no idea that it's uh, a specialty. Therefore, it has no idea that uh, you can call those methods. So it's, you're restricted to only call those methods on a consultant. Mm -hmm. yes, exactly. Exactly. Whatever is convenient. And again, why do, you, why do you bother with all this? Because you might want to write some function that works for all members of a certain superclass. So, for example, if I had flying things, all right, I might have flying things, and it, let, let's say that was important to me. So I have a flying things uh, um, superclass, and underneath that I have, you know, living flying things and mechanical flying things, and then underneath that I have, you know, bats and birds. And underneath mechanical, I have helicopters and airplanes. And underneath airplanes, I have propellers and jets, and so on down the line. There might be a method that I want to give it a flying thing, doesn't matter what kind of flying thing, and do certain things. Like ask, maybe like, what is its maximum speed? Now, each one of those objects might have its own method for calculating the maximum speed, right? But I know that if I give a flying thing to this function, I know that the function get, get maximum speed, let's say, is available because I declared it on that top level. Yes? So, like in terms of consultant and specialist, so you can have like a function that's looking at all of the consultants on the project, mm -hmm. and I get consultants and specialists, they have Exactly. And that's exactly what we did on the project class. Really really well. Yeah. In other words, this array list, when we initialize the members of that array list, we're only giving it consultants. Now, those consultants could be specialists, or they could be consultants. But I can then form my list of consultants based on, based on that. And then in this statement here, I can comfortably cast it to a consultant because I know I've given it only either consultants or specialists. All right. Let's try this real quick. Oops. I think that's what I want. What's going to happen there? When I go and try to do the calculation for Mike, pointed to by X. Will it? 
No, it won't compile. Why not? Why will this not compile? Because a consultant isn't necessarily a specialist. All right? A consultant isn't necessarily a specialist. All right? Therefore, I can't go and assign a consultant to a specialist object reference. And let's sure enough go and compile that. And it tells me that it's incompatible types. Now, <laughs> I feel like a magician on this one. Nothing up my sleeves. Let's try this. Here's what I'm trying to do, and you tell me if this is going to work or not. I'm creating my specialist object, and I'm referring to it with a specialist object reference called S. I declare a consultant object reference called Y, and I set it equal to S. So now, Y contains a pointer to this object. I then say specialist X equals and again, I don't know why I want to cast incorrectly, but I say X equals Y cast as a specialist. What do you think? Yes? Okay, that's one answer. It would work okay, but this is one of those things where I'm going to get one of those cryptic messages saying I'm doing something dangerous. Right? In other words, the only reason this works is because I've rigged the deck and I know for sure that Y is pointing to a specialist. All right? Therefore, when I cast it as a specialist, I know that that's good. You're never going to in real life have the situation where you know that. All right? So therefore, it's going to be dangerous. And sure enough, let's go and try to compile it. Yeah, didn't give me a warning, but that is, well, let me just put it, it is dangerous because I don't know for sure that Y is pointing to a, a specialist object. I want to take a couple minutes, and I apologize, we might go over uh, a bit, to talk about constructors. All right? Um, I think I can introduce this and then we can talk more about it next time. And, and I, if I'm not mistaken, it's covered pretty well in the book. Uh, you, can, you can take a look for that. The rule of constructors are like this. First of all, a couple of, uh, you know, um, what do I want to say, uh, ground assumptions. Um, first of all, consult, uh, consultants. Why did I pick something that starts with con to talk about constructors? I, 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 like every third time I mess that one up. Constructors are not inherited. We know that. So if you declare a constructor on a superclass, it doesn't inherit down to the subclass. So that's rule one. Rule two is, is that the superclass initialization has to happen before the subclass initialization happens. All right? Another way to put that is the constructor on the superclass has to run before the constructor on the subclass can run. All right? If I don't declare any constructors on my superclass or subclass, then if I call the constructor of the subclass, what will happen is that the generated no argument constructor will fire off first on the superclass, then the generated no argument constructor will fire off on the subclass. So even if you had one on the... Yes. Yes, it will. So in other words, if I define a no argument constructor on the subclass, it would first 
fire off the one that was defined on the superclass or that was generated on the superclass. Now, if I start defining functions, things get muddied. Because, if you remember last time, I got an error until I added that in. Let's see why. Thanks. I got an error until I added this in. Let's examine why. Let's take a couple minutes to examine why, and again, we'll come back to this next time. The reason we got an error is because when a constructor on a subclass is called, the first thing that happens is the constructor on the superclass gets called. Now, we have two choices. We can either explicitly say what constructor we want on the superclass to run, or if we don't explicitly say, then the no argument constructor runs on the superclass. So in this case, if I call this constructor, I've not explicitly said what constructor I want to run on the superclass. Therefore, the no argument constructor runs on the superclass, and if I don't have a no argument constructor on the superclass, I get an error. Now, how do I explicitly say to run a function on the superclass? I can say super. Now, I don't have to declare a no argument constructor on the consultant class because I've explicitly said which of the superclasses constructors I want to call. All right? Now, a few things about that super. That has to be the first line of code in the constructor. All right? So I couldn't do a few things and then say super. Yes? You're, you're right. Thank you. I, I was not paying attention as I was cutting and pasting. You're right. It should be that. Super. That will call the constructor on the super class. But since I've explicitly said it, it will call that one, and therefore I don't really need a no argument constructor. Now again, that has to be the first line in there. All right. I can alternately call this. I can call another constructor on the same class by saying this, and sometimes you chain constructors that way. You can do a super or you can do a this, but you can't do both. Not in the same constructor. Because both of them have to be first line. And both of them can't be first line because there can only be one first line. Therefore, you can only do one or the other. Read through this in the book. We will probably spend a little more time doing this. Let me absolutely be sure that this compiles so I don't put up bogus code. And... That's actually Jeremy, because I cast that to, to that. All right. Um, so we'll see you up in lab. Um, I did get everything I wanted to, to get done tonight. We didn't spend as much time about constructors as I wanted to. We will definitely revisit that um, on Monday. Also Monday we are going to talk about, we probably will start talking about interfaces. Um, 
One thing that you should know about this casting is up casting is safe, right? I can always say that a specialist is a consultant. I know that for a fact. Down casting is dangerous. I could say this consultant, I want to treat it like it's a specialist, and I could luck out, right? And it could work because they really are a specialist. If, however, they were not a specialist, then I'm going to get a runtime error. I'm going to get an invalid cast exception. Maybe we'll look at some examples of those next time. So therefore, if you're going to downcast, you better be sure based on something else in the code that you're not going to have a problem, and you should put some sort of error trapping in there. And we'll talk a little more about error trapping. Yes? Are there what? And what would a generic be? You could declare, um, yeah, the closest thing to that would be to declare it as an object. There is at the very top of the Java inheritance chain, there is object. In fact, that's what array lists expect. Each array list is a, a simply a, a list of objects. And to treat it like a consultant or something else, you have to cast that object as something. But I actually could put on an array list multiple objects that weren't even really related to each other. I could put, you know, um, maybe I'm sending, uh, may, maybe I have an array list of people I want to send a, a mail thing to, uh, a postcard. And I might have a student object and a professor object and an employee object. Even though they have nothing to do with each other inheritance-wise, then I better be checking for the type of that object before I try to cast it. All right, and, and you can do that. But yeah, the closest thing to that would be um, a, uh, just an, uh, an object that's at the top of the chain. And then again, you can cast it to be other objects as well. And again, we saw an example of that with the array list. All right, we'll see you up in lab.